I'm Brother Caleb, and welcome to Going Deep Into the Word. On today's video, I want to do something just a little bit different. Before we begin today, I want to introduce us in prayer. You know, it's very important to communicate with God and have His Holy Spirit lead and guide us because that's what we really need. We need the leading and the guiding and the direction of the Holy Spirit. So before we begin, let's just introduce Him into His place with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, Lord, we thank you for this topic that you've laid on my heart. Lord, may the words come out of my mouth be your words and not mine. Lord, I just pray that you bless the people that have felt led to watch this video today. Lord, have your way in this place. Have your way in our lives, Lord, because we need you. We need you more. So, have your way in this place. And we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Today, of course, I have been really praying on what I should talk about today because God has been stressing three things just on my heart recently. And uh, it's just probably about 45 minutes ago. I was still like, God, what do you want me to talk about? I want to be led by the Spirit. Lord, show me what you want your people to know. And finally, finally, God showed me something. Of course, of course, I have these three topics, and all of them are really good, and they will be talked about at whatever point God wants them to be talked about. But today, God has led me to Joshua chapter 5. And to put a name to my message, you're going to kind of question me like, wait, what? Wait, what's that name again? The name of today's message is the importance of spiritual circumcision in our day-to-day -day lives. Again, the importance of spiritual circumcision in our day-to-day -day lives. And I just pray that it will bless you as it has blessed me. So we're going to be starting, as I said, in Joshua chapter 5. Uh, we'll be starting in verse 1. And uh, we'll be reading on through just a little bit, and we'll be talking and discussing what the Holy Spirit wants me to show you that He has shown me. So without further ado, let's get to this word. And it came to pass, when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the side of Jordan westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan before the children of Israel, unto where all were passed over, that their hearts melted, neither was their spirit in them any more, because the children of Israel. I want to discuss about this, because the Amorites and the Canaanites, these were some very, very aggressive men that fought, and they had a name to themselves, the Amorites and the Canaanites. They were definitely challenges for Israel but what Israel did not know was that the Amorites and the Canaanites were terrified of Israel because what they did to Egypt at the Red Sea they annihilated Egypt and they're like oh please we don't want them coming over here and then when God allowed them to go across the Jordan they were like oh no why are they doing here why are they here? What are they going to do to us? And they were scared. And it says that their spirits were not in them anymore. They were, they were melt. Their hearts were melted. Their spirits were like, oh no, what's going to happen? Because God was leading the children of Israel. Let's continue here, though. At the same time, the Lord said unto Joshua, "Make these sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time." And Joshua made him sharp knives and circumcised the children of Israel at the hill of the foreskins. And this is the cause why Joshua did circumcise. All the people that came out of Egypt that were males, even all the men of war, died in the wilderness by the way after they came out of Egypt. Now all the people that came out were circumcised, but all the people that were born in the wilderness by the way, as they came out of Egypt, 
them they had not circumcised. For the children of Israel walked forty years in the wilderness, to all the people that were men of war, which came out of Egypt, were consumed because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord, unto whom the Lord swore that he would not show them the land which the Lord swear unto their fathers that they would give us all land that floweth with milk and honey. And the children of whom he raised up in the steed, then Joshua circumcised. For they were uncircumcised because they had not circumcised them by the way. I'm going to talk about this for a second. Of course, God wanted the children of Israel to be circumcised, of course, because the, their fathers were circumcised too before they got out of Egypt. And there's so much importance about circumcision and the importance of actually spiritual circumcision, which is the point I want to make today. Because we all, as in followers of Jesus Christ, need to be on the daily circumcised from the flesh. And it came to pass, we're going to be continuing verse 8, when they had done circumcising all the people, that they abode in their place in the camp till they were whole. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off of you, wherefore the name of the place is called Gilgal unto this day. And I'm going to stop right there and talk about the importance of spiritual circumcision. You know, living in this world, we have constant attacks on us. Physically, spiritually, mentally, everywhere. The enemy is trying to destroy us in any way he can. And a lot of times it's destroyed by social media. Uh, here's, I like how this was used one time. How a lot of Bible studies go. You know, it should be our desire to want to know the Word of God and to read the Word of God. As I've been talking about in the past several videos, this should be the center point of our lives. God should be, along with the cross, the center point of our lives. But here's what happens a lot of times. Uh, let's just be reading this and, oh, something just came up on my Facebook. Oh, I gotta like this. Oh, Oh, that's nice. Oh, wow. That's great. That's cool. And you know what? Maybe just studying, whenever you're studying the Word of God and you start getting focused on that, that will draw you away from the Word of God. And then we'll get into more and then more and then more. And then, oh, just a few minutes, I'll just like this and like that. Has become a few hours of time where we have had our time stolen. From us to read the Word of God to digest what He wants us to know for the day. Because, as I said last time, we are not going to know spiritual warfare and how it comes about if we do not read this Word of God. Because when we read this Word of God, we understand that there is an enemy trying to destroy us, trying to bring the thoughts of the flesh and everything that revolves around me. See, the enemy wants to destroy you by you, by taking you out of this word and surrounding yourself with things that you should not surround yourself with. Whenever we should have this desire that I want to know the word of God, it should be a time where I'm going to set aside part of my day, part of my time. And I'm going to give it back to God because He is worthy of it. And the importance of spiritual circumcision. This is where it's going to get good. Because this is how we circumcise ourselves. You know, I like how God told Joshua, make him sharp knives. Make him something that will just cut part of it out. It needs to be sharp. You know what? This word of God is a two-edged sword. And it will cut us and it will bless us. But people today, I'm not going to take any credit for this because I heard this in a message and I feel led to say it. Well, I want to feel blessed. I don't want to feel cut. 
I don't want this to cut me because I want to keep that part of me whenever God's saying cut this out of your life cut this out of your life cut the flesh out of your life let the spirit align with his spirit so you and God can become one because it's a constant battle on a day-to-day -day basis for the flesh and the Holy Spirit they're always fighting. There's always controversy between them. There's no peace between them because the flesh wants to do what it wants to do. And the Holy Spirit is what God wants you to do. And of course the flesh does not want to give over itself to obey the Spirit of God. Because the devil knows what he's doing. He truly does. And he wants to lead you down a path that God has not intended for you. You know, as I've been saying for quite a while, God has a plan for your life and He wants to use you in your way. God has a plan for you, but He's not, He is not going to strike you down if you don't listen to Him. He loves you very much. That's why He sent His Son, Jesus, to live the life you and I can never live but died on the cross that you and I deserved. You know what? We should not be here today. I should not be here today. I deserve, because I've sinned against God, I deserve to go to hell. I deserve to do that punishment. I deserve the cross. But Jesus looked down. God looked down and said, I want to redeem man. I want to give them a second chance. So he sent his son. Because everybody that's lived, every human, is born with sin because of Adam. But once we ask Jesus in our heart, his righteousness will cut us, energize us, renew us on the daily. You know what preaching online and I thank God for let me preach online but you know what preaching online it's not because I'm more important it's not because you're a, a pastor evangelist prophet teacher you're not more important it's because God has a plan for you that he wanted to use you he wants to use you but he wants you to do it in the right way. Where it's my desire to live for Jesus. It's my desire to want to reach this lost world. But we need a daily circumcision from the flesh. Because as I said just a few minutes ago. We always have it coming at us by the social media. What Hollywood says. You know what? If we let that dominate our lives, God cannot use us the way He wants to use us. But whenever we get into this Word, let it cut us. You know what? It does hurt though. Oh God, I did not know that was wrong. But that drives me to the point of repentance. That God, please forgive me. I did not know that was wrong. Please forgive me. Use me, Lord, the way you want me to use me. He will, though. That's the amazing thing. If you ask God to forgive you, He will forgive you. And if you do not know Him, you know what? It was accounted unto Abraham for righteousness, for believing what God told him. But the amazing thing is, we have Jesus now. That if we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that Jesus came to die for you and I, we will have everlasting life. So it's your choice. Are you going to live this tossed to and fro life of going between the spirit and the flesh? Are you going to, or, or, or are you going to ground yourself in this word 
that you know it by your heart. God wants these, this scripture on your heart that you will know that you know what the Word of God and what God says about you. But it's your choice. I'm choosing today, right now, that Lord, you are going to be the center point of my life. Cut out whatever you want to cut out. Bless me where you want to bless me. Take away from what you want me to have taken away. Have your way in my life today. So that's what God's wanting to show you today. Please consider what the Word of God says, that how important it is to be spiritually circumcised and they had to be spiritually circumcised before they went into the promised land. Before they could do anything else, they had to be circumcised. So before you go to heaven, before you pass on from this life, we need to have a spiritual circumcision. Of course, if we're not born again, we need to be spiritually circumcised and come to the realization that we're a sinner in need of a savior. And after that, on a daily, we need to be circumcised from what the flesh wants. It's not going to get easier whenever you grow in God. It's going to get a lot harder because the flesh and the spirit are fighting constantly. So please remember that. So I'm going to ask you to do two things for me. One, have a blessed day slash nice forever. And always remember, God loves you. And I love you too. We'll see you next time.